talking. <laughs> no restriction on topics. <clears throat> no, no, no worries. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the outlook on poverty in Penang. Uh, I'm breaking it up into two parts. Uh. First part is what you are basically here for. Should you buy? What's the trend for property uh, prices? Is it a good investment? Where should you buy? What you should buy? How much you should pay? When you should buy? That's the first part. Second part is a little bit more interesting. I hope. I wish the star people were here to listen to what I have to say. Because the second part of my talk is about the industry. Not on the outlook for property, but the outlook for the property industry. And some of the things that have been written in the mass media and the papers particularly, they need to be addressed. And I'm here to address them on behalf of the industry. Okay, thank you. So the, the first thing, what's the outlook for property sector in Penang? I'll get the numbers out of the way. Huh? In the year 2009, these figures came from NAPIC, the, uh, 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 the property, the people who collect you know, stamp duty, so they record all the transactions that happens. Huh? For the residential side, in the year 2009, there was 16,436 transactions um, and they came up to 3.719 billion. That's for 2009. This is for Penang. Yeah? In the year 2011, the number of transactions was 30,674. Yeah. Uh, water volume, please. Um, <coughs> And this came up to 7.722 billion. This is for uh, the residential sector. This includes the primary, meaning developers sold, and the secondary market, meaning So this is for the primary and secondary market. So basically, transactions have uh, almost doubled from 16,000 plus in 2009 to 30,600 plus 2011. In value terms, 3.7 billion 2009 to 7.7 .7 billion, more than double actually, 2011. So both primary and secondary. Then the next question is, how much is the primary market? How much constituted the secondary market? Well, from the figures we have, it's about half. It means half of these transactions came uh, through the buying from developers. So in three years, 2009, 2010, 2011, it basically doubled. Okay. What about Penang? Well, to me, the fundamentals are still here for Penang. The fundamentals of why property is strong, will continue to be strong in Penang, is here. Um, non Penang Knights, who are, who are non Penang Knights here? Raise your hand, one. All Maso Penang. Eh? <laughs> Okay, I, I, talk, I want to talk about the seven C's, the seven good C's, you know, the alphabet C, the what Penang has. We have a, the first C is choice. Penang has a lot of choice for you in terms of the language you speak. Chinese, Bahasa, you know, and, and, and English. Communication is never an issue. Many dialects of 
of Chinese as well, of the philosophy of the Mandarin, Cantonese, Teochew, and all that, Dhaka. Then we have choice in terms of housing. You have high rise, you have low rise, you have landed, you have high end, uh, things that are not so expensive. You have choice in education. You have a lot of colleges here, you have universities here, you have Chinese schools here, premier Chinese schools here. You've got the old uh, missionary schools, free school, saints, MBS. So you've got that kind of thing. Then, of course, in terms of accommodation, you have a variety of hotels. And for a lot of people who, who are religious, you have a lot of churches, temples, mosques, and all that. So we, we are very strong in what we offer in terms of choice. The second C is about cost. Again, we are competitive. So we are very, very uh, cost conscious. You know, we, we want to save money. And, uh, make our, our dollar go very far. We don't like to pay for parking, you know? <laughs> Illegal park and all that. So we have, you know, we have uh, competitiveness in terms of cost in our labor, of course in our housing. I would say our housing is still very affordable if you look at the laser context compared to what you're paying, Clan Valley, PJ, Johor. And then of course food. We're still very attractive for food. Uh, <clears throat> my voice is a result of the durian season. <laughs> so, you know, we have those kind of things. And then, of course, manufacturing, we are very, very strong in manufacturing because our costs are here, our, our base is here. So. Third thing, third C, we have culture. That part, we all know, we have a long 200 plus years of the British in here, and then, of course, not only the British, you have um, the Thais, the Burmese, the Indians, the Chinese, the Sumatrans, the Javanese, so many. We have the Middle Eastern, the Middle Eastern side as well. We have heritage because of that. We have diversity because of the food, and we have the vibrancy. I don't think we have lost any of our cultural diversity and our mix. The fourth C is that across cuisine, again, I'm also a walking advertisement of how good the food is in Penang. Well, we are unique. A lot of it is endemic. A lot of it is also legacy. The fifth one of the fifth C is connectivity. We have air, road, bridge, sea. We have banking connectivity, we have internet connectivity, so we have all those things, you know, we have those ingredients. And the sixth C is care. We have health care. Health care. For people who want to relocate here, they want to look at what type of hospitals, what type of, um, you know, uh, health care you can provide. Of course, we have medical tourism that's very, very strong. And people who want to bring their children here, I think that's very important as well. And then the care in terms of hospitality, care in terms of a government that cares, okay? And then of course, care in terms of the education that is provided. The seventh C is of course we have the coast. We have the coastline, we have the sea. So these are some of the seven Cs I talk about. Obviously you all can think of more. So fundamentals are still there, they haven't changed. Second thing on what's good for Penang is that tourism numbers are still very, very strong, both local and foreign. Um, the traffic jams are a testament to how people find that uh, it's very interesting to come to Penang. The durian stalls are well patronized. Your uh, biscuits on Burma Road always causes a jam. You know, all of us have passed through Burma Road. Once you pass through him, you have no, no accident actually, it's just everybody came to get the biscuits there. FBI numbers are, are still very strong, they still look good, people still want to come to Penang. What Penang offers above Iskandar is that, okay, Iskandar, okay, you've got some tax incentives, you've got infrastructure, 
But what do you do after you finish work? You look at the bare land, you look at bare buildings. You need to go somewhere, you need to eat something, you need to do something. Where, where do your children go? So we are ahead of Iskanda because of that, because everything is already in place. You have the inner city, you have the heritage zone, you have a lot of things going on there. And then employment. You know, part is employment is very strong. Pay is, pay is going up. I think a lot of people uh, are still having problems employing, finding staff, recruiting, incentives, bonuses are up. So it is true that everybody has difficulty in sourcing labor and staff. Fifth matter is that there's still infrastructure that is either ongoing and yet to be completed, and infrastructure that is planned. We are yet to reap the benefits of the second bridge. I've uh, said, but the star didn't want to print it. You know, when the second bridge is completed, the connection to Batukawan, to the North-South Highway, will be completed on time. But the federal government has left out two huge packages on the island. One where the bridge hits Batumau, another package where it is to go to Pamatang Damalau. From Batumau all the way down to uh, Mr. Toh's The Light Project by IJM, that will bring dispersal and then uh, southwards uh, dispersal of that side. So those packages have yet to be awarded. 250 million each. The 250 million figure actually sounds very familiar. You probably can <laughs> place a 250 million somewhere. Something that 250 million went somewhere, like if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, Consultants have not been awarded for those two packages yet. Uh, they say by August, and hopefully they will award the projects by the end of the year. But what will happen is that the bridge will be completed on ahead of time in September. However, the dispersal on the island side will take another one and a half years after they award the job. So I've actually said this during our visit to the second bridge that the second bridge will end up as the biggest parking lot in Penang if nothing is done to disperse the traffic on the island side. Then you have uh, the, government, the state government saying that they want to upgrade Green Lane, Abdullah Chang, and four other major road uh, projects, you know, underpasses, and of course the planned tunnel to the mainland. Uh, from